Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. If you don't know me, my name's Sam. I'm a professional hairdresser, and I am going to do a very thorough, in-depth review of this Dyson dupe that I got from Amazon. I have the professional Dyson Supersonic Blow Dryer. I use it on myself, I've used it on my clients, and I absolutely love this thing. I really, really do, but it's pricey. This retails for over $400, so I wanted to see if there was a dupe, something that was comparable for less money. And I found this one on Amazon. This is the Love PS hair dryer. And I mean, it looks super similar to the Dyson one, but this one is only $40. So it is literally less than a 10th the cost of the Dyson one. And this is a number one bestseller on Amazon. It has almost 3,000 reviews, almost five full stars. So I had to get it and try it. We're gonna open this bad boy up. Literally still has the plastic on it. So we're gonna do a first impression review, try the blow dryer out just on its own. If you've never tried the Dyson blow dryer before and you're just looking for a good hair dryer that's gonna dry your hair fast, you'll see how it works and get my opinion on it just on its own. And then later in this video, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparing it to the Dyson one. I'll do half my head with the dupe, the other half with the Dyson. We'll see, compare the differences. And then at the end, I will give you my final thoughts. These are some of the claims. It says that there's a blue light. It's radiation free, has overheating protection. It's foldable and lightweight, reduces hair frizz, keeps a constant temperature, has negative ion technology, two settings and two speeds. So in the box, this is what it looks like. It comes with the hair dryer itself a concentrator and then a diffuser attachment immediately my thoughts are this feels like really lightweight and like cheap the other thing is this is pretty small comparing it to the one that comes with the dyson like that's a pretty big size difference so this one's going to take way longer because you're not going to be able to fit as much hair in it and you can see up close how this one has just a bunch of little holes all throughout it and the holes in this one are much larger and there's not as many of them. So I'm not really sure how this will work, but don't you worry, I will be using this later in the video. And then this is the concentrator, which I'm not like super stoked about to be honest because that's big compared to the Dyson one. And the point of a concentrator is to concentrate the hot air so that you can point it in a certain direction and really get the hair nice and smooth. If you're blowing air all over in multiple directions and it's not being like forced and concentrated just in one direction, you're gonna get more frizz. I'm interested to see how this one is gonna work. Also, you can see like side by side it definitely is more lightweight and everything just feels cheaper like you can just tell the quality of it like even this like even the plug is just giving me like really really cheap like con air vibes and yeah the blow dryer itself it almost reminds me of like like a child's product like it feels fake to me <laughs> and like looking inside of it it even just looks to me and like look at the back too it just looks like a cheap old school con air blow dryer like the kind of little cheap blow dryer that you would find in a hotel room just looking at it without turning it on i cannot imagine this being comparable to the Dyson at all. And obviously I know, okay, this is $40 versus 400. Obviously I know it's not gonna be like exactly the same and same kind of quality, but so far, just from like looking at it and feeling it, I don't even feel like this is worth $40. This feels like a $20 blow dryer to me, but let's try it out. 
So first what I'm gonna do is just use it without any of the attachments. I'm gonna put it on the highest power and I'm just gonna rough dry my hair a little bit just so I can see how powerful it is, how hot it gets, if it has like a weird smell or anything. surprised it didn't feel as powerful as the Dyson but it definitely feels more powerful than like a regular blow dryer and I was kind of expecting there to be like a weird like you know when you're you, you are using a cheap product for the first time a hot tool a toaster even and like the very first time you're using it there's like a weird chemical burning kind of smell I was expecting that there wasn't any of that. Let's put the concentrator attachment on. It does have the same like magnetic thing like the Dyson does with the attachments. And I am just gonna blow dry my hair the way that I always normally do. Also, I forgot to show. So it has technically three different options. You have your cool shot, which is nice. Some blow dryers, the cool shot button is like something that you have to hold down the whole time, which is super annoying. So I like that you can just click this into cool. Then there's like a low speed setting and then a high speed setting. Something just happened and I look up at the camera and my camera had cut off and stopped recording. I was blow drying my bangs. I had did, you know, my typical flip bitty flip kind of thing. And some of my hair got stuck in the back of the blow dryer. It like got sucked in. Luckily it was just like a few strands. I don't think it actually like ripped my hair out, but that was scary. So yeah. I don't know how well you can tell, I because I know my hair is really dark, so it's a little hard to see on camera, but these ends are frizzy, and they feel like, it just, I don't know, like it doesn't feel smooth and shiny, it just feels like very frizzy, and it almost feels like it didn't get 100% of the moisture out of my hair, but I felt like I kept going over the same sections over and over and over and over, and I was like, okay, I need to move on because I'm over it, and also like I don't wanna fry my hair by like continuously just going over the same spot. Um, but yeah, like you can see My hair looks like shit. These are the results I would get with a $20 Conair blow dryer. Yes, the power, like the actual airflow coming out is stronger on this than like on a cheap $20 blow dryer, but I mean, so what? Like I said, my hair doesn't even feel 100% dry. And the way I know that that's true too is because I feel like as more time goes on, my hair is like growing. Like the frizz is just because there's still moisture in there. And I really, really don't like that this is just so open and exposed like this because it can be really dangerous because air is like getting sucked in through here. And especially if you have long hair, you very easily can get your hair caught in the back of this, which is really scary. 
Also, this is the filter for the blow dryer. And on most blow dryers, you know, you can just like screw this part off, it pops off really easily so you can clean the filter because that's very important. You need to clean it every so often so that you preserve the life of the blow dryer. And if the filter gets really, really dirty, that could even be a fire hazard. But this has a little screw at the bottom. I don't even know if I have a screwdriver small enough to get that open and it doesn't come with one and how annoying like who the hell wants to be unscrewing this every time they need to clean the filter another thing i wanted to test out supposedly you can fold this in half so you like turn it as if you were gonna twist it and then it folds like this i mean that's kind of cool and convenient if you're traveling but again, this is giving me hotel blow dryer vibes, is it not? Okay, it's a week later. I just washed my hair again. And now I'm going to try out the diffuser attachment on this blow dryer and see how I like it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of mousse in my hair, scrunch it in. I'm gonna do this the exact same way that I normally would when I'm diffusing my hair. And whenever I'm diffusing, I always put it on the lowest speed because you wanna dry the hair in a scrunched up kind of way so that it defines your curls. You don't want like really strong air blasting the hair and like blowing it all over the place because then it's just gonna be a frizzy mess. So I'm gonna put it on the low setting. get the hair in I can't really get the hair in the diffuser because it's kind of like a flat shape as opposed to like more professional diffuser attachments are more shaped like a bowl I feel like I have to turn the blow dryer off first place my hair in there and then turn it on That's pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Ow! Started to rip some of my hair out again. The fact that this is only my second time using this blow dryer and my hair has gotten caught in it both times annoying also because this is so small I mean if I had shorter hair I guess it wouldn't be as big of a deal but because my hair is long it doesn't all fit on here I have to do like really small sections at a time which just takes forever I'm gonna just finish this side and then I think I'll do this side with the Dyson just so you can kind of see the difference Okay, so this side is all dry now. I don't really have like any big complaints about the final result. It's just like the actual process of doing it took a little bit longer and I don't like the fact that my hair keeps getting caught in it. But now let me show you with the Dyson how it's different and how much faster I can do it. Also, I like with the Dyson that you have the heat and the speed settings separate. So when I'm diffusing my hair, I put it on the highest heat but the lowest speed. And I can literally take this whole side of my hair. You see how like I'm holding it right under the hair and it's not blowing it all over the place like the other one was. I can literally get this entire half of my hair all in one giant section. And I can really like get in there and I don't have to worry because nothing is getting sucked in from here. The filter is down here. So I can just do what I have to do and I don't have to be worried or scared of it pulling my hair.
so here's my hair fully dry but I'm really happy with how this side came out the results are good I feel like it, both sides look very similar but obviously you saw the differences when I was actually using the blow dryer and actually when I'm feeling my hair like now that it's not hot anymore there's definitely still moisture on this side like this side is not completely bone dry but this side is meanwhile this side took me like a tenth of the time to do the attachment is just so much smaller in size so it's just much more time consuming and the fact that it's like it's hard to get my hair in there because it's blowing it all over the place okay so this was a different night obviously don't mind the skincare on my face I was getting ready to go to bed but I decided to smooth out my hair and blow dry one half of my head with the Amazon dupe blow dryer and then the other half with the Dyson so that I could kind of compare the two firsthand and that way you could see the difference in results from both blow dryers. So I did the exact same technique on both sides, used the exact same brush and everything. I had both blow dryers on the highest like heat setting, fastest setting. Obviously I sped up these clips for the sake of the video, but looking back at the footage, I spent the exact same amount of time on each side. The Dyson one actually took me, I think, like five seconds less to do. So it's not like I took my time or like put more attention into one side over the other. But as you can see, the results are very different. The Dyson side is objectively way smoother than the Amazon side. And I did not put any kind of like hair oil or finishing spray or anything this is just, it was just heat protectant and then I blow dried it. So I decided to go over the Amazon side with the Dyson just to smooth it all out. And you can see like so much smoother and nicer. Okay, so final thoughts on this blow dryer. Obviously, when you compare it to the Dyson, there is just no competition and i wasn't expecting that okay i'm not expecting a 40 dollar blow dryer to be comparable to a 400 dollar one but clearly they modeled the look and the design of it to look similar to this one and a lot of people have been claiming that this is a dupe or referring to it as a dupe so is it a dupe is this a good alternative no absolutely not this in no way compares to this one point blank period and actually, I mean, I've always loved this blow dryer from day one that I got it, but in doing this review and testing this one out, it really just made me appreciate this one so much more. And I really think if you want this blow dryer, I do think that it's worth it. I know it's ridiculously expensive and it seems so stupid, but you are getting what you pay for. Like this is damn good but my thoughts on this blow dryer just on its own not comparing it to the dyson it's okay i really don't like the filter being on the back here i know most blow dryers have that however most blow dryers that i've noticed especially ones nowadays the holes in the filter are very very small so your hair can't really get sucked through it these are pretty big and two out of the three times that I used this blow dryer, my hair got stuck in it. I feel like I should be able to just blow dry my hair and not be afraid and worried about it getting sucked in the back of here. I also just don't like the size and the shape of the attachments. I feel like you don't get enough concentrated airflow through the concentrator attachment. It's just such a big hole. It just doesn't really do it for me. I do like that the attachments are magnetic and, you know, they're inspired by the Dyson in that way. That's cool. But is it necessary? No. It's just one of those features that's like, oh, that is cool. But is it worth this being a little more pricey than just like a standard Conair blow dryer? Absolutely not. The diffuser attachment I just feel is too small. Um, it was just taking a really long time and it was a little more difficult to use because as you saw it was blowing my hair all over the place Which is not what you want when you're trying to diffuse your hair and what really sealed the deal for me was I was taking a look in Target recently I saw blow dryers that looked so much higher quality that had like a safer filter that came with way more attachments 
that were all under $40. And not for nothing, but this blow dryer in general just feels really cheap to me. I actually was doing my friend's hair at her house recently and I forgot to bring my blow dryer so I used hers. I don't think she spent more than like 25 bucks on it and I felt like that got her hair dried just as fast. So is this a bad blow dryer? No, it's not that terrible but it really feels so much to me like a blow dryer that you would find in a hotel room. And I just don't think that it's worth $40. Like I think, even though I know $40, it's like, oh, this is like nice and cheap compared to the Dyson, but I still think $40 is expensive for what you're getting here. And I think the only reason why they were able to make the price what it is, is because it looks like this one. And when you're comparing the price, $40 seems cheap. But realistically, I say go to Target, get yourself a 20 or 30 dollar blow dryer that's going to be better than this so that is my very thorough and very honest review of this love ps amazon blow dryer if you found this review helpful please give this video a thumbs up it really helps my channel out a lot and let me know if there's any other products you'd like me to review in the future and i'll see you guys in my next one bye